So if I remember correctly, the last rule was like if you stop five minutes late, you get an extra five minutes. <laughs> so if I get stopped ten minutes late, I get. <laughs> no, no, I have a list. There are special rules for organizers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to keep it uh, short. Um, so, um, yes, I'm supposed to talk about twisted Alexander polynomials. So today, today we'll only talk about the classic Alexander polynomial. And then uh, tomorrow we'll talk about the twisted version of it. Um, okay. Um, and so um, I want to assume as little as possible. So all I need is a fundamental group. So, and if there are any questions, then just um, ask them. Okay. So. Um, what are we interested in? Are we interested in knots? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Okay, so we're interested in knots. Um, interested um, in knots. Um, And uh, I guess by now we all know examples. Um, so uh, the three, well, as we, as Abuji was saying, there's basically two main examples. Um, uh, one is um, the trefoil, and there's uh, so a figure eight knot. Um, and I think uh, every, but you were taught them to push a knot theory for a while has its own way of safely drawing the figure eight knot. Uh, so let's see. Um, I always find it slightly challenging. I think I got it wrong last, like um, a week ago here at um, ISA, but I think this time it is correct. Um, okay, four crossings and alternating. Okay, <laughs> figure eight knot. Uh, and um, perhaps I would um, also add the unknot as a particularly important example. <coughs> okay, and um, so what do we want to know? So there are various questions um, we are interested in. So uh, one, so questions. Um, so uh, how can we distinguish knots? Um, Distinguish uh, knots. Um, so, for example, like um, sh surely um, preference is not the same as a figure eight knot, uh, but um, how do you do so? How do you show it? Um, also, when you say um, distinguish, um, um, when you say distinguish, it always depends a little bit on what you mean by two knots are the same. So, there are a couple of um, uh, uh, slight variations. Um, <coughs> one is uh, you just take a knot here and you can deform it. Um, um, the other one is uh, you allow a diffeomorphism of um, R3 as the 3. So, um, um, for example, like um, um, distinguished knots um, and uh, EG, um, you can um, uh, take into account the uh, orientation. Uh, uh, EG, um, um, consider, well, EG is a bad word, um, consider orientation. So, for example, you can ask um, is, um, if you consider knots with orientations, um, can you uh, deform one into the other such that the orientation uh, is preserved? Um, um, and another subtle question is, um, like if you take a tr um, uh, any knot, um, you take its mirror image, um, so then you have a homeomorphism which sends one knot to the other, but uh, can you really deform one into the other? So that's also uh, an important question. So um, is um, is um, k equal to km, so we're here m stands for mirror image. Okay, so um, you have um, different knot types which you want to distinguish, but you can also ask subtle questions like you have a fixed knot, but then perhaps you look at orientation, switch orientation, same or not, uh, you take a knot, uh, take um, the mirror image, can deform it into itself, um, okay. So that's questions we want um, to study. Um, and um, other questions is, um, or um, as I guess most people know, uh, every knot um, is uh, the boundary of a cipher surface. Um, so um, mm, given uh, k, determine um, um, so gk. So that's a minimal uh, genus. Um, of um, a surface whose boundary is k. So you fix your knot k. Now you look at all surfaces, so f as in surface. Um, I think it certainly comes from Fleche and Schimmen. So uh, f is always a surface. Um, and um, oriental compact them. And now you want to look at the minimal genus um, of such a surface um, whose uh, boundary is uh, k. So it's like a, a natural uh, measure of complexity of a knot. Um. So for example, like here, the unknot um, is. Um, um, 
bulge disk, um, so it's a genus zero, and it's an amusing exercise uh, to show, uh, give rigorous proof um, that uh, if you have an autumn <laughs> whose genus is zero, it is actually the unautum. And uh, here, Treff for the gate not, um, I guess most of you have done it. Um, um, you know that it has a um, um, surface of genus 1, but then you also have some um, knots away. Um, initially, you see a larger uh, cipher surface um, with larger genus, and then you can ask, well, can you somehow find a, um, a, a surface lower genus, or um, is that it? Um, and um, perhaps some um, last um, question I want to study, slightly more technical. So um, is um, um, K a fiber? So what does that mean? So I should explain to you what it mean for not to be fibered. Um, so here we say uh, K is a fiber. Um, if um, so, um, if S is three minus K, so that's a um, nice topological space. Um, and now you can ask um, whether there's a surface bundle over S one. So if um, that is um, um, <laughs> if uh, there exists a surface bundle um, like that. So you can ask, um, see if you top load space, um, and um, are you lucky? And you can write there as an, um, a surface bundle over um, S1. So for example, EG, um, if you look at S3 minus the unknot, um, so what's S3 minus the unknot? Uh, Uh, yes and no. Um, you mean the right thing. So it is um, to one thing where you always have to be a little bit careful in when you do not theory is um, there's two slightly different points of view. Either you take out um, the knot, then what's left is an open subset, or you take out an um, uh, open tubular neighborhood, um, then what's left is um, a compact topological space, which is often a little bit nicer. So, um, and very often, um, people are a bit sloppy and they sort of go back and forth without ever saying what they're doing. So strictly speaking here, what you get is um, uh, an uh, open torus, um, open solid torus. Uh, so yeah, it's just like um, S1 times uh, an open disk. Um, and then that's clearly an S1 bundle uh, with a fiber um, um, a disk. Um. Now what's um, more challenging is to see that actually the trifle is actually fibered. So that's, um, at least for me, um, challenging to see. But uh, there's this nice book um, by Rolfson, Knots and Links, and here's a no very nice picture um, where it explains to you why the complement of a trifold knot um, is actually fibered. Um, um, for figure eight knot, um, um, I think I never managed to see that it's fibered, um, but clever people tell me it is fibered. Um, but um, uh, on average, if you take a, a random knot, um, almost certainly it would not be fibered. Um. Sometimes it's called the tyranny of small examples. So if you look, only look at small examples, then you might get the wrong idea. Like you look at the first three knots and you see, oh, they're fibered. So you think all of them must be fibered, surely. But um, small examples, also especially perhaps knot theory, can be a little bit misleading. OK, so um, that's some questions um, we like to um, address. Um. OK, and um, now what uh, tools do we have? Um, so uh, one tool, standard tool of uh, topology, is, um, well, algebraic topology, you just look at your favorite invariants from algebraic topology. And um, um, what do you have? You have fundamental groups, um, higher homotopy groups, and homology groups. Um, and um, homology groups actually turn out to be pretty dull. So um, uh, for, for all knots, um, the homology groups um, of the complement are just um, z in dimension um, 1, 0 in higher dimensions, so boring. So, um, but the pi 1 actually turns out to be quite interesting. So um, there's the following theorem, uh, which um, goes back to uh, Witten. And actually, so that's um, uh, Witten with the H. Um, so it's not um, uh, the um, 9 a.m. Uh, Witten. So Wilbur Witten. And uh, one certainly should also mention Gordon and the Lücke. Because um, I mean, what I write down the theorem was written down by Witten, but um, it very much builds on um, Gordon Lücke. Um, and perhaps I should also, let me just write also Thurston, just to make the connection to what the Abhiji was talking about. Um, so it's the following. Mm, <coughs> so let um, k, j be prime knots. So um, 
prime means it's not connected sum of two other knots. Um, if you don't know what it is, uh, don't, don't worry about it. Uh, it's not that important. Um, so if um, um, we now look at um, the fundamental groups, um, and if um, they are um, isomorphic, then um, Mm, then I hope now this correct formulation there exists a uh, homeomorphism H of S3 such that H of K equals J. Uh, um, I hope it's correct now. Um, so what's the deal? So um, um, the main statement goes back to uh, Gordon Lücke who showed that um, if um, two knots uh, have um, um, have homeomorphic complements, um, then they are equivalent. Um, and uh, what they used is like a, a big um, ingredient is um, um, a Thurston, who showed them um, that um, if you have not complements, um, um, they have a decomposition into um, cipher fibered spaces, which we ignore. Um, and hyperbolic um, um, pieces. Um, so basically, um, it uh, very much um, builds on hyperbolic geometry, which uh, Abhijit uh, talk, talked about. Um. Anyway, so we'll just uh, t take that as a um, um, black box, and we'll not even use it. Um. It's just um, saying that um, uh, pi 1 is, uh, in many ways, um, almost a complete invariant. Um. Okay, so uh, um, that theorem tells us um, if um, you want to study knots, one approach is um, well, um, just to study um, um, the fundamental group um, of your knot complements them. Um. Okay, so um, that's nice. Um. Yeah, is there no proof of this theorem <coughs> without using hyperbolic geometry? Um, there's no proof, yeah. No? So. Yeah, so I mean, the only proof I know is, um, um, that is that's, that, that's the only proof I know. The only reference I know is um, uh, Witten, which is a three-page paper which uh, builds on Gordon Lücke which is like, uh, I don't know how many pages, uh, many pages, and then uh, that again. Um, mm. I think it was known before. Void automatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it came out. Yeah, like it's like a cyclic like surgery theorem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you certainly needed them. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. So um, so what? Um, Waldhausen proved is. Um, let's see. Gotta be careful. So if you have a uh, two Hawk manifolds and you have an isomorphism of uh, fundamental groups, and now you have to. Okay. Now you have to be a little bit careful. Um, so let's first look at um, closed manifolds. So you look at a closed Hawk manifold. If you have an isomorphism of pi one, then you get a homeomorphism. Now what's a little bit tricky here is um, so you have an isomorphism of fundamental groups. Um, and now, if you want to uh, apply Waldhausen, you uh, need to worry about what's happening to the boundary. So like um, Waldhausen has a statement like, if, um, let's say you have two arc manifolds with boundary. So now he says, um, I, uh, look at the fundamental group um, plus um, the inclusion-induced maps um, from um, pi 1 of the boundary components. And he calls that a peripheral system. And then if you have two peripheral systems, um, uh, then um, uh, you're in good shape. Um. And so here's um, uh, the point is, um, um, you don't need to know where the longitude and the meridian in the fundamental group. Um. So uh, Waldhausen would be very happy. Or would, um, you could work with Waldhausen um, if you knew you had a homeomorphism, which sends um, a longitude to longitude, meridian to meridian. So that's the subtlety here. Like, um, the subtlety is um, if you know the fundamental group, if I just give you a presentation for the fundamental group, um, a priori I have no idea where is the meridian. So the question is? Um, so here it's actually, um, so the homeomorphism can be orientation uh, reversing, yeah. Because for example, like if you take uh, any knot and you take its mirror image, then of course the fundamental groups are isomorphic, but um, they might not be the um, same on the nose. Um. Okay. I don't, I don't know that slogan, but sure, yeah, it's um, perfectly fine, yes. 
Okay, so yeah, almost complete variant. Okay, fair enough. Okay, um, so um, I guess most people know how to determine the fundamental group, but perhaps I'll quickly remind you. So recall, because we will actually need it, um, a Wörtinger presentation. Okay, so you start out with a naught. Um, Not K. And um, to be more precise, you start out with a diagram of a knot, um, slight difference. Um, and um, I guess I give it some orientation. Ta ta ta. And um, now um, pi 1 of um, S3 minus K. So you can write down a presentation. The presentation means um, you have some uh, generator and some relations. Um, and um, you have. Um, a uh, generator for each uh, strand, so here x1, x2, x3. So x1, x2, x3. To be more precise, so, so what do you mean a strand gives me a generator? So you put uh, your base point here, and um, perhaps let me use my, that notation. Mm -hmm. So that's supposed to mean, indicate, um, here's my base point. And you go from your base point uh, to that point here, straight in a straight line. You go underneath the knot and you return. So you get a closed loop. And you do the same here. So uh, okay. So uh, here you have um, three generators. So here it goes also tap, 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 and so on. And now when you get this, you get um, um, a relation for each um, um, crossing. So. Um, Let's see whether I get that straight. Um, so um, perhaps it so um, here is um, uh, x i, x i plus one, and um, x j. Even though x j could also go the other direction, but let me just do that case here, and. Um, now you have your okay. So you have a one generator. You have the second one, and uh, here's the third one. And you can just slide this one here to over there. So it's the same uh, element in pi one. And now what you see is um, if um, you go x i, x j x i plus 1 inverse, x j inverse. What you do is um, you go like that. <laughs> OK, but now uh, the uh, back forth turn here was completely unnecessary. It's homotopic to just, um, you start out here, you go here. Instead of going back forth, it's just homotopic to, you just continue like that. So what you eventually see is um, you start here, and you can save your all these um, Back forth the journeys. And so what you see is it's just homotopic to that loop here. So what you see is that the loop um, xi, xj, xi plus 1 inverse, xj inverse, um, uh, it is actually a null homotopic because um, it's, um, it's all behind the knot. So this loop here is behind the knot. Um, it actually bounds a disk, so you can contract it um, and it's um, trivial. So uh, what you see is uh, that uh, for each crossing, uh, you get um, a relation. And the relation is, uh, is always of the form uh, xi, um, x, now either xj, xi plus 1 inverse, xj inverse, or whatever the orientation of, um, so that we just write down. So here, xi, xj, xi plus 1 inverse, um, xj inverse, um, um, that would be what's happening here. Or if um, the um, uh, orientation of uh, xj was the other, other way around, then it would be xi, xj inverse, um, xi plus 1 inverse, um, xj, um, xj. Okay, so it's just like here, uh, the sign um, of the exponent of um, xj just um, flips them. Um, and now, so here, perhaps actually let me just write down for the trefoil. And um, so here you get x1, 
uh, x3, x2 inverse, um, x3 inverse. It might be the opposite because I'm just writing it out of memory. So it might be for the mirror image. Um, and now here you get uh, x2, x. Uh, so now all that happens is um, since um, your um, uh, trifold has a threefold uh, symmetry, you see once you have one, uh, the other two are just like a cyclic permutations um, there of them. So you see x2, x1, x3 inverse, x1 inverse. Um, and um, um, let me just say here, um, don't um, need um, the last um, crossing. OK, so uh, what's happening is, um, um, in general, you have an autumn, um, draw a diagram, you um, do the procedure which I'm uh, sort of indicated, and you get um, you have um, k strands, and so you get k generators. Um, and now a little exercise, um, if you have k strands and you have at least one crossing, you also have exactly k crossings. So you get k generators and um, k crossings, so k uh, relations. But actually it turns out um, you can always uh, skip uh, one of them. So what you see is um, you get um, um, a presentation which has um, k generators um, and k minus one uh, relations. Um. Okay, I, mean, I guess most of you have seen it, so it's, that's why I do it a little bit quick. Um. Okay. So um, that's um, nice, um, but um, now we just to run into the next problem. So uh, we got we went from knots um, to uh, groups. Um, from uh, now we nicely computed the groups, um, but now we have a presentation here. And um, well, what do we do next? Um, like um, just because you have a presentation doesn't um, something do anything for you, because. Um, um, if you draw a different diagram for trefoil, um, um, you get a very different uh, presentation. So the question is, like, if you have two um, presentations, uh, how do you um, extract the variant which you can actually um, compare? And um, um, one approach is um, um, to, do, uh, to do introduce the so-called uh, Alexander polynomial. And um, that requires just a little bit of preparation. <laughs> So, uh, or perhaps let me just do one more example. Example. Um, so, for whoever who has taken um, algebraic topology and with them a nice Seifert Van Kempen theorem, here's a nice exercise. Um, so, uh, you look at pi 1 of s3 minus uh, the pq torus naught. Um, so, um, what's a pq torus naught? Um, so, uh, it's. Um, it's um, so a torus knot, by definition, is a knot uh, which uh, sits on the standard torus. Um, and the PQ torus knot um, is um, the knot which um, winds, um, OK, I'm going to screw it up, um, P times around this direction and Q times around that direction. Or put differently, um, if, you want to, uh, if you like things more rigorously, you just take here um, the uh, slope of P over Q on um, um, on the square, and then you just do the standard um, map uh, from the standard square to the standard uh, torus. Um. Okay, and um, now what is a um, very nice um, exercise um, in the Seifert Van Kempen uh, theorem is to um, calculate, um, give a nice formula for pi 1. And what you do is um, you look at um, S3 minus the naught, um, and you, you, you think of S3 as uh, the union of two solid tori. So it's like that torus and um, the outside torus. But now you remove them, um, the knot here. So now what you see is um, that um, if I'm going a little bit delicate, um, um, you obtain that topological space um, by gluing two topological spaces which are homotop equivalent to uh, solid torus. And you get the uh, two generators. Um, x, y, and you get the relation from the gluing, from the Seifert van Kempen theorem. It turns out to be x, p equals uh, y to the q, or um, minus q, who cares? Um. OK, that's, um, if you have not um, never done that, um, um, but if you know Seifert van Kempen, very nice exercise. Um. OK, so um, um, that is the advantage. Um, I mean, sure, you could also have um, just uh, taken the diagram here and uh, written down um, a vertical presentation, but it's a mess. Um. But here you have a nice short. Um, uh, formula. OK, so um, next I need what's called the Fox calculus.
Okay, so uh, let um, f um, be something very simple, namely um, a free group. Yeah, yeah. They're not the same generators. Oh yeah, so actually, good point. Yes, so they are certain. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. actually, I might want to say something about it. Um, do you want to say something about it? Um, actually, yeah. Let me actually say it. Um, so um, <coughs> so here, each um, x i is a meridian. Well, by construction, and what's a little bit more confusing is um, okay. So here x and y are come from a very different construction. So um, they come from like basically x y z x is um, um, the um, curve um, in the inside the torus, um, and uh, the y is um, the uh, central curve um, of the outside um, um, torus, um, and um, so now it gets a little bit. It's not entirely trivial to write down what's a meridian, but actually what I want to mention is the following. So here's the following. You have a map from pi 1, um, T, P, Q, to um, to uh, Z, which is just the uh, abelianization. So I guess as most of you know, um, um, if you take the naught group, um, the abelianization is um, isomorphic to Z. And um, what's a little bit so here, um, if you have a vertical presentation and uh, you look at the um, uh, abelianization, then each meridian just goes to one. Uh, here it's a little bit more tricky to see what's happening. And um, well, here's I guess um, um, the hint is um, well, um, even relation. So that relation still has to be satisfied um, uh, in any hom homomorphism. So in some sense, there's only one solution, namely uh, x uh, goes to uh, q and y goes to um, p. But uh, well, uh, and the abelianization is only well defined up to plus minus um, a bit sloppy. Okay, that's so you s in that sense, you see you're far from being a vertical presentation. It's a very different type of um, presentation. Okay, um, so now let's say so it's just general nonsense right now. Um, we have um, a free group uh, on M generators, so be a free group. And then there exists um, um, a Z linear map from the free group um, to the group ring. And it has a nice name, namely it's um, Written uh, like as in partial derivatives. Um, um, so uh, how does that work? Um, uh, such that. Okay. So um, so to any uh, element in the free group, um, I want to associate um, an element in the group ring, meaning um, a formal linear combination of elements in the group ring, and um, I define this as follows. Um, so. Um, mm, well, okay. It's easier like that. Okay, so first um, I tell you what's happening on the generators. So you have uh, xj, and now a map which is um, written del, uh, del xi. Well, if that is um, a decent uh, notation, then there's only one solution. Namely, it clearly has to be um, the chronic symbol, meaning so it's um, 1 if j equals i and um, 0 otherwise. I mean, if it w that was not satisfied, it would be very bad notation. Um, and uh, the other one is, um, so you have um, two elements um, in um, F. And um, now, again, you have um, this um, suggestive uh, notation. So it sounds like uh, you want some type of um, a Leibniz formula. And it turns out you almost get a Leibniz formula. So you get um, del, del xi of u, but no v, plus um, u del del x i v. OK, so there's nothing here. So it's like it's um, sort of like a Leibniz formula. But um, it's just um, you take the derivative of the first guy, but oddly enough, you forget about the second guy. And then plus uh, u times the derivative of um, the second guy. That's just the way it is. Um, and um, in some sense, if you're very careful, you notice it's, it's actually a lemma that you actually have to prove um, that uh, such a map um, exists. Um, 
and but then it's clear that it's unique, um, and that is called um, a Fox derivative. Um, okay, I might or might not be able to explain later on where it comes from. Right, the first time you see it, um, it seems pretty arbitrary. Okay, and. Um, Okay, so uh, then I guess we can state the following theorem. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let uh, k be a naught, um, and uh, let um, so suppose we are given a presentation pi one s three minus k. Let's say we are given a presentation x one to x k, r one to r k minus 1. Okay, so here's the minus 1 is important. Um, so as I was saying before, um, if you have a knot, what if a diagram, you get a vertical presentation, and so you can always find a presentation where the number of relations is one less than the number of uh, generators. Um, and there might be many different um, presentations, like for the trefoil, we saw that the presentation, but we also saw here, as, as most of you know, T23 is the trefoil. So for a trefoil, you can also have a very different type of um, presentation. And again, here it's um, like a number of relations is one less than the number of um, generators. Um. Okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let um, phi from pi 1 s 3 minus k to, so that is just, um, um, the infinite cyclic group generated by T, so it's just a different name for Z. Um, B, well, perhaps I can just write here oriented, not them. Um, the map um, uh, with, um, which has a property that the phi of the meridian uh, equals a T. So, like uh, here, what's going on? So, here we were saying that um, you have the abelization, which gives you homomorphism to Z, um, but now you have, to be, you have to be a little bit careful because um, if you have one map to Z, you have two maps to Z, because up to sign. But now uh, perhaps you want to specify your sign, and that uh, you do by, if you pick an orientation for your naught, um, then you have an um, ori oriented um, meridian, and the meridian is a generator for H1, and now you say that one is supposed to go to one, or that one is supposed to go to T. So just uh, specifying which of the two homomorphisms um, to that uh, you actually want to take them. Um. Okay. And um, so uh, pick uh, i in 1 to k such that the phi of x i is um, not equal to 1. So here, in that group, um, 1 is um, the trivial element. Um. So actually, it's all it's saying is I want the phi of xi to be non-trivial. Um, don't worry about that. Um, and um, we define, so now I have to be a little bit careful, a is um, equal to, um, okay, now what we do is um, we take um, all Fox derivatives. Mm. Um, now it's just got to be a little bit careful. It's a del R J del X I, and um, let me stop here. So uh, what are we doing? So um, oh, actually, perhaps um. Oh, but you see, again, one is, um, in that group, one is a trivial element. So, um, so, 
So the meridian gets sent to T. So it's a, yeah, it's a slightly um, confusing notation here. So we have to just say non-trivial. Then it's perhaps less um, confusing. Yeah. OK, so well, now here it gets uh, just perhaps a little bit confusing. So what do we do? So we um, take um, all Fox derivatives. OK, so um, del um, R J del X I. So I can put them into a matrix. Um, now the only thing we have to be a little bit careful is um, which ones are the rows and which ones are the columns. Um, and um, that's what I um, had to think about for, uh, for a minute. Um, so um, I pick um, the convention that um, um, I have to just um, make it clear. So here I now have um, k rows um, and uh, k minus one columns. OK, because um, the uh, um, I's, um, I always get confused about these things. The I's, um, so the first one here, corresponds uh, to the rows, um, and the I's uh, runs uh, through the XI's, so we have um, uh, K rows. Okay? And now um, I get uh, my Fox derivatives, uh, which lie in here, and um, mm, So um, the Fox derivatives um, lie in um, the group ring um, of the free group on the xi's. But now I apply each of my, um, now for each uh, xi, I can uh, just um, 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 it's easier in practice than in the theory. So uh, uh, you have your, uh, your phi uh, to, uh, to t, and you just um, you just um, you get an induced map um, from the free group on the xi um, or the group ring uh, to uh, um, the um, group ring of uh, t. So that is um, so confusing here. So matrix. So we'll do an example in a second. You will see it's easier than it sounds. Um, matrix. Um, with some um, entries um, in that um, t to the inverse. Okay, you just um, here, so you get an entry in um, uh, which is an element of the grouping of the x i's, um, and now um, you just apply your phi, and um, you get um, you replace uh, the x i's uh, by powers of t, and you're done. It is just the immunization, yes. So the only th thing is um, I fixed them. Um, um, I mean, the immunization is just you go to H1. H1 is isomorphic to Z, but not canonically isomorphic to Z. Um, so just specifying um, an isomorphism with a Z. Um. OK. And um, we define that. Um, and uh, we define. So uh, um, now an invariant um, tau k of a t to b. Okay, so you have a matrix um, in um, uh, with them entries in z to the inverse. Um, so when you see a matrix, you really would like to take a determinant. Unfortunately, it's not a square matrix. Um, okay, what you do is um, you just um, um, remove um, the ith row. So you take um, determinant um, of um, a with the um, ith row removed, a little bit arbitrary, admittedly. Um, and um, just to compensate them, um, you divide by phi x i minus 1. And um, the statement is, um, it's supposed to be a theorem, so it's supposed to be a statement. Um, um, so this um, uh, invariant. Um, is uh, well defined um, up to multiplication by a power of t and um, a sign. Okay, so let's um, uh, do this um, slowly again. What's the statement? So we want to, um, given an author k, we would like to um, introduce um, an invariant. Um, and what it is um, going to be is um, it's going to be not quite a polynomial. It's going to be um, a rational function. And um, it's defined in a slightly mysterious way. 
So we take um, any presentation, doesn't matter which one, um, as long as um, it's deficiency one, meaning you have one generator more than relations. Um, you do these um, Fox um, derivatives, which is easy, and um, you get uh, almost a square matrix. Um, and now what you want to do is you want to remove um, one matrix, as uh, one row, and you compensate um, um, by dividing by the corresponding uh, phi xi minus one. And now th this um, mysterious um, item here just uh, ensures that you're not dividing by a zero. And now the statement is um, that um, um, that is um, an invariant of the not k, which does not depend um, on your choice of um, i, and which does not depend uh, on, more important, on the choice um, of uh, the presentation. Okay, so uh, mm, perhaps I don't want to say too much about the proof. Um, so uh, mm, let's say you only want to get um, an invariant um, for um, knots, um, and you say um, you're happy with just working with working presentations because you always have working presentations. Um, then, in some sense, it is relatively straightforward to prove. I mean, what you do is um, um, you know if you have um, um, a knot and you have two different um, uh, um, uh, diagrams, so you can go from one diagram to the other using uh, Reidemeister moves, um, and then um, <coughs> we do a Reidemeister move one, two, three. You just see how does your um, um, vertical presentation change, um, and then you do um, um, the slightly um, obscure formula here, and you will see uh, that that any uh, um, uh, Reidemeister move um, more or less miraculously um, that um, item here doesn't change, um, and you have found uh, a uh, well-defined invariant. Um. What's a little bit um, more tricky to show is um, that um, that invariant here is um, actually uh, that you can plug in any um, presentation for pi 1. So that's a little bit more mysterious. Um, um, and uh, for that, you basically just you need a more machine. So, um, for example, there's something called um, like some of the fundamental invariants of topology, so for me at least, um, is um, fundamental groups, high homotopy groups, uh, homology cohomology, and what's called the Reidemeister torsion. <laughs> now, and you um, basically, um, if you use what's called the Reidemeister torsion, whatever that means, um, uh, then you can prove um, that theorem. Um, but um, otherwise, just take it on uh, faith. Um. OK. So um, perhaps let's do um, um So the theorem is that this invariant is independent of the choices of i and the presentation. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Uh, it has to be because otherwise you wouldn't know what to do. Um. Is there a Fox calculus kind of thing to deal with some other presentations like this? You mean if it's not a deficiency one? Yeah, but uh, how, do, how will you ever get, like, um, you always have a deficiency one presentation. Okay. Like whatever, um, okay, we'll see a, f a few more deficiency one, r like we'll, okay. uh, like see, we will see, like whenever we come up with a presenta presentation, will always be deficiency one. Um, okay, so perhaps let's do uh, one example. Or perhaps, um, <laughs> or perhaps let me just state one theorem first, um, um, because I guess uh, many of you will have seen the Alexander polynomial, and uh, let me just state the relationship. Um, so um, uh, tau k of uh, t equals the Alexander polynomial of um, divided by t minus 1. So here the t Alexander polynomial. Um, so uh, now you could, of, of course, ask for proof. Um, but the um, thing about the Alexander polynomial is uh, there are about uh, 27 different definitions. Uh, well, not quite. But uh, I think I counted at breakfast uh, five or six different definitions. Um, so now, depending on which definition you learn, they would have to give you a different proof. Um, um, so. Um, uh, perhaps let me just say, um, there's a very nice book which I really like um, by Turaif uh, on the combinatorial um, torsion, Reitermeister torsion. So there's a very um, uh, short, uh, like a hundred page um, little book um, on um, what's called Reitermeister torsion. And um, there he explains everything uh, beautifully. So it's one of the best books I ever read. Um, um, 
I mean, it's not totally, um, like, I guess many of you perhaps have seen the definition in terms of perhaps the cipher matrices. I don't know, how, how do you do it in your course? Did you do it in your course? Oh, we didn't. Ah, okay. And then it says, that, oh, then you can take it as a definition. Okay. Um, okay. Then you can also say it's a definition of the Alexander polynomial. Um, anyway, um, so just um, sort of put them things into a context. Um. Okay, but now let's try to uh, calculate them. So, example. So, um, for example, like we could uh, try to calculate um, the um, um, Alexander polynomial or the right, uh, the, uh, this invariant um, of um, for um, a trefoil, uh, sorry, for a figure, uh, for um, a torus knot. Um, so, T, T, P, Q, T. Okay, it's a bit confusing. Tau of T, P, Q with um, a um, variable T. Okay, so what do we have to do? Um, gets confusing because it's uh, so simple. So, I have to write down my matrix, which is in this case just like um, uh, two by one. So here it's like um, del r del x del r del y. And um, what is the slogan? So uh, we pick um, one of the two um, variables which um, gets sent to something which is non-trivial. So here yeah, I can take either; doesn't matter. So um, I, we take, um, um, let's say we take a x, so then I have to divide by phi x minus 1, and now here I have to delete um, the row corresponding to um, the um, um, x derivative, um, so I actually have here uh, del r del y, and apply a phi to it, um, and then just a one by one matrix, so I don't even have to write the determinant, um, and um, so that's why I was quite happy actually about them. Um, question here about um, what's happening here. So because um, um, we just saw before um, what is our fee doing. So it sends um, um, x um, to uh, t to the q. And now we have to take, um, so here my relation is, um, um, let me cleverly uh, rewrite it um, as uh, y to the q x to the minus p. So now we have to take um, derivative, um, and um, here is um, the formula. And so what you do is, um, well, you just, um, so the uh, approach is always, um, so you have um, a word, um, and you just uh, start the reading from uh, left uh, to right. So here, like, um, let me write like this, um, y. So here you have it uh, q times. Okay, and you have to calculate um, the um, derivative um, with respect uh, to a y. What do you do? Well, you lose some uh, Leibniz formula. So you start here, and you break it up into y times the rest. So now you compute um, um, del y del y. So that gives you a 1. So here, 1. Plus, um, um, plus now y times um, derivative of that. But now again, um, derivative of that starts with a 1. And so what you see is, um, at the end of the day, you get a 1 plus y plus y square plus a y to the um, p minus 1. Okay, and now we just have to uh, replace our y by t to the p. And you get um, a 1 plus a t to the p plus a t to the uh, 2p plus um, t to the 2p. Sorry, that's confusing. I'm sure I made a mistake here. T to the cube minus 1. And now that looks a little bit messy, but now if you use the usual formula that uh, 1 plus s plus um, da -da -da s to the k, times uh, s minus 1 equals da -da -da, you end up with, I'm going to embarrass myself, um, um, okay, sorry. The good thing about writing here at the bottom is that you cannot write anything, you cannot read that's um, perhaps potentially wrong. Um, so I think that's correct. Um, Hopefully. 
Anyway, so um, what you see is it's, um, it is um, a fairly practical um, approach um, um, once you um, get um, used to the definitions. Um. Okay, and um, um, that's nice. Um, any questions so far? Um, phi of x, so it's just, um, so phi is um, the, so let me just write here, um, so z is the same as the infinitely group generated by t, and so if um, x gets sent to q, it's the same as saying it gets sent to t to the q, and the y gets sent to t to the p. Did I, that's what I wrote, hopefully? Yes, okay. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing with uh, that, and um, depending on what's um, your favorite point of view right now. Okay, um, so um, that's um, nice. Um, it's an invariant definition in terms of the covering. Uh, that's one of the 27 definitions, yes. Yeah, but that's completely in without any choices. Uh, that is true, but uh, then, so you can, um, I mean, like, uh, one of the... Uh, so there's two standard definitions of the um, uh, si Alexander polynomial, polynomial would be either so, uh, through a cipher the matrix, um, uh, but then you also have to worry a little bit about um, choices. Um, and the other one would be uh, you go to the infinitely covering, then look at H1. It's a module of um, the group ring Z uh, to the inverse, um, and then uh, you just take um, a resolution and you take um, um, minus and you take um, greatest common denominator and uh, generator. Okay, it's common divisor, I'm sorry. Um, and then um, you get them in very random. So that's true. So you can, uh, in some sense, that's a quicker definition. Uh, the problem is um, uh, it's not uncomputable. And also, like um, tomorrow, I want to um, talk about the generalization. And there, actually, that approach will be better. So, uh, so tomorrow, I want to talk about the generalization of um, this approach. And um, for my generalization, uh, this approach is better. Um, um, than um, the approach of going uh, of doing it homologically. This approach is better. Yeah. Um, so I hope I would remember tomorrow to uh, mention at what point it's better. Okay. There's a, it's, a it's a slightly subtle point, but there's um, one issue where it's, um, it's um, clearly better. Okay. So um, okay. Now we have an invariant of knots, which is nice. Um, so um, if you're bored, you can just um, try to calculate it um, for. Um, uh, my three knots, which I wrote down initially, and you can easily see that the invariant um, uh, distinguishes um, the three um, knots. Um, and um, but that's the question is uh, what type of um, properties does it have? Um, for example, like um, we were wondering about um, um, symmetries of knots. Um, we're wondering about a genus, about fiberness. Um, and um, so let me just write down a theorem. Does it matter where? Perhaps it doesn't. Um, mm. Mm, perhaps I, or I should just uh, say a name. Um, so T, tau K T. Okay, so since I'm, I always um, um, say random names, um, so let me uh, call it um, uh, randomized torsion of K. Uh, and let me also call it the Alexander polynomial. So it's not quite the usual Alexander polynomial. We saw there's a factor here, t minus 1. Uh, but um, uh, for all intents and purposes, um, it is also the Alexander polynomial, polynomial. OK, so I might go back and forth, because I always, um, depending on um, what's more important to me, uh, I say um, torsion or randomized torsion or say Alexander polynomial. But in the, for all intents and purposes, at least for today, it's really just the Alexander polynomial. OK, so now here comes some um, theorem, um, which um, summarizes some of the key properties. Um, so um, let's see. Um, and um, perhaps um, let me formulate them in terms of the Alexander polynomial. Because if the only difference with t minus 1, it doesn't matter which uh, language I formulated them. So 1 is um, so delta k t equals, um, uh, and then I perhaps I should also introduce um, the dot here, meaning, so when I write them um, equals with a dot sign, so remember the Alexander primo is well-defined um, up 
to a multiplication by a power of t and um, up to a sign. And so that means, um, um, okay, I consider it up to that um, inequality. So, um, so equal up to multiplication by plus minus a t to the k. Um, so one thing is um, it is um, symmetric, um, mm, which is actually um, kind of annoying because um, what's kind of got a little bit lost here is um, so we're saying uh, I was saying we take an oriented knot, um, so which means we send the oriented meridian to t. So now if you take uh, the opposite orientation, it means um, the um, sign of your orientation switches of your meridian uh, switches. So it means um, uh, instead of t plays the role of t inverse, and th that basically says um, that um, the Alexander plume cannot um, tell the difference between um, the orientation of a knot. Um. So that's a little bit disappointing, but um, okay, c'est la vie. Yeah. All of the invariants we're discussing cannot detect inverses. Um, the geometric invariants, the Jones invariants, this variant, none of them can detect inverses. Yeah, so detecting the inverses is um, tricky, yes. Sir. Um, two, um, if you look at the mirror image, um, it also it doesn't affect um, the Alexander polynomial. Um, Perhaps while I write down the statements, um, I should also say a few words about the proofs. Not that there's much time left. I think it's about ten minutes left. Uh, late. Um, so, uh, um, so let me just say proof um, one is it's basically a consequence of Poincaré duality, whatever that means. So if you have seen Poincaré duality, and if you apply some fancy versions thereof, um, then eventually you get uh, that statement here. Uh, that is sort of um, obvious, just because um, um, if you take um, a knot mirror image has the same fundamental group, um, you don't see a difference. Um. So two is obvious. Um. Uh. Excuse me. What, what is oh, that's a mirror image. Um. So um, three. So the degree of the Alexander polynomial is less or equal than uh, twice the genus of k. Um, I will say something about the proof of 3 in a second, but let me first do 4. So 4 is um, if uh, k is uh, fibered, then um, the Alexander polynomial is a monic. Meaning, um, its um, lowest uh, coefficient is uh, plus or minus one, and then also the highest coefficient by symmetry, and um, the degree of the Alexander polynomial um, equals uh, twice the genus of k. And um, how do you prove that statement? Um, well, in some sense, there's an easy way of doing it, um, namely, um, if you think a little bit about fundamental groups. Um, of um, uh, fiber manifolds. Um, if it's a uh, fiber over S1, then you see that pi 1 is uh, just um, an HN extension um, or semi dike product, um, it's just a right, semi dike product um, of um, infinite cyclic group um, generated by T uh, and um, the um, um, pi 1 of um, the fiber. Um, well, another, another way of saying it is um, you have um, a presentation of the form uh, T, which corresponds to the meridian, x um, 1 to x 2 j 2 g, which correspond to pi 1 of from the fiber. And then uh, you will get the relations of the form T x i T inverse um, equals phi x uh, i, where um, phi basically corresponds uh, to your monodromy of your um, uh, fiber bundle. And so once you have uh, that um, presentation here, and you just um, apply the formula, like here I was saying, you can use um, any presentation as long as it's deficiency one, and that's the case here. And um, you just uh, apply that presentation here, and there's your um, uh, sort of um, preferred um, um, element, or the one which, um, which plays the role of xi, you take the t, and then you, if you just write down um, the formula from over there, then almost immediately you will see uh, that um, 
um, you get um, a, a fraction, and then the um, uh, top will be um, the form, um, well, would be a 2G by 2G matrix um, of the form. Um, well, okay, you just do it. Um, it's not hard. But it's, it's just, and that's here, so it's like a, um, a nice example, like uh, all presentations which sort of come out of geometry will be deficiency one. So that's how you show a four, and a three is sort of the same idea. Um, namely, what you can do is, um, it's a little, b little bit more tricky, but not much harder. So uh, again, um, you, you, you pick a cleverly chosen um, presentation. Namely, what you do is um, you take an odd complement, you have a ciphered surface. Um, so you look at the complement of the ciphered surface, and then you glue along the ciphered surface. And then what you get is, again, a, a so-called HN extension, which is like a generalization of uh, that formula here. And then um, you do the Fox calculus, and you see it. Uh, a little bit quick, but in some sense, um, it's um, it's obvious um, from uh, yeah if you so if you take um, um, different um, if you take um, uh, Seifert's um, definition it's obvious with that definition uh, you have to um, do some work um, and the, the, pro uh, the reason is why I do it like that is because um, when I do the um, generalized version it will not work with the Seifert's algorithm but it will work with that approach um. but you're right I mean like uh, there are 27 definitions uh, of the Alexander polynomial and um, for some, uh, like if you want to prove um, a property of the Alexander polynomial, um, very often with one um, um, definition, statement A is easy, but statement B is um, hard, and uh, vice versa. So uh, if you already know um, all the different definitions um, and you have to prove something, then you just pick your favorite uh, definition. And as um, Eli was saying, um, that statement is, here is obvious um, if you know that you can define the Alexander polynomial in terms of um, uh, ciphered matrices. Um. Okay, um, and perhaps the last uh, thing. Okay, so it's all kind of nice, um, but um, uh, one slogan is uh, that's, uh, yeah. You get equality also for alternating knots. Uh, you also get an equality for alternating knots. Yes, um, yeah. Anything for which Seifert's algorithm is realized, you'll get this equality. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, okay, but the slogan is um, so the example is nice, so it gives you a lot. Um, 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 like it addresses all the questions which I um, was asking initially, or at least some of them, uh, but it will never give you a complete answer. Like for example, like um, um, it will never um, uh, completely distinguish uh, knots. For example, like um, the Alexander polynomial of the n knot is a one, and there are trillions of knots with Alexander polynomial equal to one. Um, it gives you a lower bound on the genus, but there will be t well, for example, if you take any non-trivial knot with Alexander polynomial one, um, it will not give you the genus. Um, if you look at fiberness. Um, um, if it's fibered, um, the Alexander has certain properties, um, but the converse certainly, certainly does not hold them. So it's all n nice and good, um, but it just never gives you complete um, answers. Um. And so what we will do tomorrow is we will talk about a twisted version of um, the whole construction here, and then perhaps we get closer to um, a more or less complete answers. Um. Okay. Well, that's complete answers. Um, we'll see, yes. Yeah. Same construction. <laughs> yeah, in some sense, it's a, it is a pretty um, um, flexible approach. Um, I mean, you just take um, you have a link, uh, write down your deficiency one presentation, and then um, what you can, for example, you can immediately define uh, the multivariable um, Alexander polynomial, which is otherwise a little bit tricky. It's just um, yeah, like your you, you fee. Okay, now you have your ablation, so no longer just to z, but to um, z to the m, and then it's same uh, definition. That's true. So, like, it's certainly um, um, pi one on it in its own is certainly a much um, less useful uh, statement. The point is, it's a multivariable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess we go for lunch. It's obvious from your definition here that it's a polynomial. Uh, so, it's actually. Um, <laughs> say again? No. Yeah. So. From your definition yeah. here. It's not, uh, and, and, and sometimes it's not a polynomial. It's like. Yeah, that's clear because it's just like um. No, no, yeah, the delta k t is polynomial. Yeah, no, but, but also here, it's a, so here. So except for the factor of t minus one, it's a, it's a, this this thing is a, a polynomial. Yeah. Is that? Is yeah, that yeah, sure. Because you can always find you can as I was saying here, you take any presentation. So you can t in particular take a um, vertical presentation, 
and then here um, your uh, denominator is just going to be a t minus 1. So if you have a working presentation, of the x i is a meridians, and phi of x i will just be a t. So it's almost a polynomial. It's a polynomial up to um, the slightly annoying um, t minus 1 term. Sorry, I thought the, que the question I thought oh. was, does, you don't get a rational function, you always get an actual polynomial. Well, except for the t minus 1. You, in fact, don't get, you, in fact, do get a polynomial. Right? So if t minus 1 is bad, yes. There is still a t minus 1, it, it, but it will not always factor out. Yeah, for example, like, um, um, well, for example, like, um, the extended premise of property is that, um, um, t, uh, if you plug in t equals 1, it's um, plus or minus 1, so you can, uh, I see, I see. so 1 is never 0. So for example, like for the unknown term, you just get 1 over t minus 1. It's slightly annoying, but that's the way it is. Um. Well, in some sense, um, it follows uh, from 3 and 4. Because um, um, well, okay, so, um, so what I really proved here is um, that if it's fibered, um, then the um, example is monic, and the degree equals twice the genus of the fiber. Okay, but now, but now we have a three, which says um, that the degree of the Alexander polynomial gives you a lower bound of the genus. Um, so uh, three and f so if he had written um, more correctly uh, twice the genus of some uh, fiber, then three and four tells you uh, that the fiber is already of minimal um, um, genus. Um. Okay.